it's wonderful to see everyone. Uh, it's great to be back together. Um, so those of you who have seen me or my work before probably know that one of my hobbies is collecting symmetries in various forms. Um, and one of the things that I found I've been doing recently is, I don't know, it gets a little annoying drawing diagrams for them over and over again, so I'm starting to try and incorporate them into my work. So I was very pleased when I managed to use this in one of my talks. This is actually a knitted piece that I made called uh, a Fundamental Free Scroll 2, um, and it conveniently has a diagram of all of the different tree symmetries. So these are the symmetries that repeat in one direction, Color-coded beads that are embedded in this uh, knitting actually show you all of the symmetry axes and centers. Um, so this is now my go-to for freeze knitting. Um, in the past, for wallpaper groups, the patterns that repeat in two dimensions, I've used this chart. Um, and so it's sort of nice to improve these things. Um, oh, wait, that's not that much of an improvement. Oh, yeah, right. So I made a mobile. Um, the mobile is actually the wallpaper flowchart, um, and this is actually something that I was banging together in my dining room the weekend our college closed down in 2020, so it sort of developed some sentimental value. Um, so I've done various things and collaborated with various people about the symmetries that you can find in different settings. And uh, in fact, at Gathering for Gardener 13, um, this was the basis of my exchange gift. Uh, I had put together a printed card um, related to work that I had done together with Ellie Baker, um, and uh, I realized I neglected to put her name on the slide, but um, she's been an amazing collaborator, and we were working through what you can do with bead crochet, and it turns out that in bead crochet, you can use wallpaper patterns to design smooth patterns on bead crochet, but you can only get 17 of them for reasons that are very interesting um, that I can't talk about now. But for what it's worth, um, I did bring some stuff with me. So this is the book that Ellie and I wrote. I have it here. So if you want to come over and take a look at some point later on, um, there is a chapter that talks about this. And that was great because it was G4G13. Um, so as it happens, uh, lately, I've been doing some work with a colleague, um, Carolyn Yackel. Uh, she and I were both really interested in a particular form of knitting that's called mosaic knitting. It's very nice. It's like two-color knitting, but it's not as fiddly as other forms of two-color knitting. You only have to work with one color at a time, so it's very popular. But the rules for what it can do are a little bit weird. Um, and so we decided to look at this in particular in the setting of um, the two-color freeze groups, which you you may or may not be familiar with, they're a little bit less known, the two color groups, but what we have here are patterns that repeat in one direction. In each of them, there is some symmetry that swaps the colors, right? So for example, if you look up here, this top one, if you reflect across the horizontal center, black and white change places. Same for the one below it, but the one on top also has some 180 degree rotations that swap the colors. Um, and it turns out that there were 17 of those um, the same as the wallpaper groups. It must mean something. It doesn't. It just, it just <laughs> <laughs> happens to be the same number. Um, and I realized I already sort of like leaped ahead there by accident. But the thing that turns out to be really fascinating is that this is a little bit like the Shiburi situation that Carolyn was showing this morning. You can't get all of them. And you can't get all of them because of mechanical reasons related to how mosaic knitting works. Um, if you are interested, please ask either of us. We will be happy to tell you. Um, and it's not that complicated. And so these three groups turn out to be impossible. And the others have some constraints about which way you can arrange them. Um, but it turns out you can turn them into patterns. Um, these grids uh, show the actual knitting mechanism by which you do it. And, um, and there's actual knitting. And uh, we wrote a paper. Uh, so the gift that I'm giving out is related to this paper that Carolyn and I have that is coming out pretty much as we speak. So there's a DOI for it on the card that I don't think works now, but should probably work in a week or two. Um, and uh, that is the front of the card, and this is this um, piece of knitting um, called Float Free Bumblebee for reasons that you can also ask about. Um, and so the postcard has this on the front, and uh, you know the um, uh, information on the back, including, I realize I, I sort of neglected to mention, this picture is actually the uh, graphical abstract 
for the Journal of Mathematics and Arts paper that we wrote um, with the mandated um, constraints, combinatorics, and color swapping symmetries, um, alliteration in the title, very important in, in math papers about cyber art, I feel. Um, so uh, the nice thing is that there are exactly 14 symmetries, which is really handy. I have just one problem. I don't know what to do in two years. So if anyone knows anything with 15, pl please, <laughs> please come and talk to me. Um, if you would like to see more of my things, or if you would like to get, for example, a closer look at the mobile, I've got a couple of other things with me, including my college was nice enough to have an exhibit in the gallery of my mathematical artwork, and so I have the catalog here. Um, and my stuff is all online as well, so if you want a screenshot or a cell phone snap, um, that would be the site that I would go to, and if you click around, you can find me as well. So thank you very much.